today's message. Thank God for mom. Look to your neighbor and say, my neighbor, I thank God for my mom. Even if she's still alive or she's no more. I thank God for my mom. I hope they said it heartily. Look to the one on the other side that you did not look to and say, my neighbor, I thank God for my mom. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of my message is Thank God for Mom. That alone, that line alone is enough. It's a message enough. It's loaded, it's pregnant. Thank God for Mom. And to all the mothers, I want to say once more to you, a blessed, God-filled day to you. Today you are celebrated. Today you are honored. This is your day. Today we want to place value to you. Place weight of honor on you. Today, mothers, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your role. We acknowledge your importance. This is your day. Everyone here on earth is here because of a mother. The first person to carry you the first person to nurture you is a mother. She is there at the beginning and she is likely to be there at the end. That's a mother. Very powerful role player in the life of any human being and in the life of humanity. For the dearest things in our lives, we can count on mom. I said for the dearest things in our lives, we can count on our mothers. A mother's love lingers longer when others have given up on you. It is the mother, it is mom, who hears and understands even those things we have not heard, we have not said. A mother will hear and a mother will know those uncommunicated things. The other day I was appreciating my wife. No end. And, and you know, they were, we were with our grandson. And somehow they would say, Ulambile. He's hungry. I'm busy playing with this dude. Maybe for an hour, but they will say, Ulambile. He's hungry. And once they bring that bottle, the guy will light up even more. They will be able to say, we are But he's feeling asleep now. I did not even see a penny. I didn't see the hunger or the sleep. But you know, I know he, he needs to change. I don't know anything. But a mother picks those things up. They don't have to have been mothers forever. But this thing comes instinctively with them. Mothers will understand even when you are older. They are able to pick up certain things about you. That nobody would be able to pick them up. I said earlier on that a mother is there at the beginning and the mother will be there right through until the end. She is the child support system. And frankly, some of us are still supported emotionally and otherwise by our mothers. Even today, old as we may be, a mother continues to be concerned. 
She is, her concern carries us through the cares of life. My mom is 81 years old on Tuesday coming. And frankly speaking, if I had it my way, I would be with her today. But I cannot be for obvious reasons. But at 81, I can tell you, I'm a married man for 28 years now. At least she can trust Mahad to take care of me. But I would laugh when I'm at home. When I get there, she will say, Hi, Mamma. She is asking Mumfundis concerning Tadum Fundis. She is she, she, she is still concerned. I mean, up until this day, she will drop some messages. As as you know those nicknames that come from the mother. Only. That's a mother. Nobody can replace a mother in one's life. She is concerned. She will move your heart. I always say, I'm not mama's baby. Amen. I'm not mama's baby. But I am definitely my mother's boy. And every man and every daughter is supposed to be right up until the end. Because this is somebody very, very special to you. A mother is one of the most important people you will have, ever have in your life. The question I would like to ask you, when last did you bless your mother? With your presence, with your presence, with your honor, with your love, I implore you today to do just that. To make them smile. To, make, to show your love and appreciation to them. The Lord says in his word, honor your mother and your father and you will live long in this life. To honor means to place value and importance. I thank God that the world knows to stop and appreciate these two very important people. And today we honor mothers. Mothers are very special. They are concerned and they are care will continue right up until the end. We see this even with the mother that Jesus had. Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was always concerned. She was always looking out after Jesus. There was a time where Herod wanted to kill them. She was there together with Joseph to go and hide away with Jesus. We see her concern the other day when they could not see Jesus and he had gone into the temple. When she eventually caught up with him, she spoke to him and said, where have you been? We have been looking for you. A mother is always bothered. A mother is always concerned. Again, we see the mother at the foot of the cross when Jesus was being crucified. Ma, the mother of Jesus was there 
Because a mother will be there at the beginning before you even know yourself. And a mother will be there right up until the end. We see her instrumental even at Jesus' first recorded miracle at that wedding in Cana she had the revelation of the grace that was in her son she had no doubt about the power that Jesus possessed mothers know their children mothers understand even the talents and the grace of God that is upon them because on that given day Mary went to Jesus concerned about the people and said they have run out of wine and then went to the people again to tell them whatever he tells you to do do it that's a mother she has an eye to notice she has a heart that is concerned she has a back to carry you she has big arms to cover you that is a mother what would this world be without mothers Today, I thank God for a mother. And in this world that we are in, I've noticed that there are some threats today to this world of mothers, to real motherhood. There is a big threat to that. Mothers are challenged. Mothers mother the world and their families under very trying times, under very challenging times. And today I want to like to open our eyes to a few threats that mothers have. Some of them we may not have noticed. And perhaps if we can notice them today, we would better appreciate the mothers. We would better appreciate our wives as they mother our children. One of the biggest threats that mothers face it is the need to become financially independent while striving to become effective mothers. When a child cries, we say take him to his mother. When they are sick, take him to the mother. Even if the, when it's time to go to work, the person who must report uh, sick most of the time it's always the mother. But at the same time, they still need to prosper. Academically, financially. Some are even single as they do this. So there is a big need. You are raising those kids alone. No one is, he is helping you. But at the same time, you also need the money to raise them. Most of the time, how easy it becomes for us to judge them for their failures without uh, 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 putting ourselves at their feet or in their shoes and learn to understand how it is to try to strive financially but at the same time being an effective mother coming back home to help those kids with the homework before you even cook for them and you have to wash for them and all the children in the house even the one who shaves and the church says amen the mothers have this glaring need 
They have very demanding responsibilities. But they still pull this off. And I know it takes a lot from you, mothers. And this morning we salute you. And I'm trusting God that as the men and as the children in the house here, we will do our best to support you. I remember the first time I became late at church was after I got married and especially after we we began to have children. I used to fight with my wife. I used to scold her. I would sit in the car. I would tell her that I'm a leader in the church. I serve in the church. And you've come into my life and you have messed things up. Until the Holy Spirit convicted me. And said, why don't you take time to watch what she does before she gets to this car? And I began to see how she would have to wash the kids. How she would have to cook for them. And how she would have to cook lunch for us so that when we come back from church, the lunch would be ready. And she would have to dress the kids up. And all that I was doing was to wake up and pray because I was a man of God. Now I would have to wake up and read the scriptures because I was the anointed man of God. And I thank God for that revelation because then I began to assist her. And I began to wash the kids. And I began to iron for them, dress them up and feed them. So while she was doing the other things, I would be doing other things. And I believe that if we could begin to assist the mothers and step into their shoes even today and not let everything the burden be upon them alone we would have better mothers those mothers are depressed they are anxious we see them angry they are frustrated by age 40 they are sickly it is because of the burdens that we put upon them the responsibilities upon them the demands at the job and the demands at home my mom I salute we grew up comfortable. We were well to do at home. And when I went to check, with hindsight, I appreciate the fact that she ended up bringing a lot at home. My dad was employed in the Department of Finance. He was earning well. But my mom was the one who really made things to go round. She worked as a teacher during the day and she worked as a teacher at night and she sold some stuff during the day and she would drive, she would get onto a bus and go to Cape Town and she would come back and sell a whole lot of things or golden products or tap away all these things my mom would do because she wanted us to be comfortable. She wanted us to live well. And mothers get to do that. The sacrifices that mothers make are so unbelievable. And I pray that today we will begin to appreciate them. Do our best to support them and help them as they do this so that they grow old peacefully so that they don't lose their minds frustrated along the way. Can I get an amen if you are with me this morning? Amen. So there are challenges that the lady, that, 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 that motherhood faces. And these threats are very, very strong on them. What about the sleep deprivation? We, we, we don't even think about that. The moment she gives birth, they say uh, uh, they doesn't sleep, they only sleep And how many day. people sleep effectively during the day? Nah. 
She doesn't sleep well. She has to take care of this cute little baby. And then after that, that she has to take care of all of that. And she doesn't sleep well. And all I will do, I will complain. You're no longer taking care of me. You're no longer... Have you taken time to take her to your spa? Have you taken time to consider the fact that she has not been sleeping well? Have you ever taken time to take some of your leave days? Sir, just to take care of this baby so your wife can recharge and reboot and sleep well? You say she's frustrated. Yes. Who wouldn't be frustrated when they are sleeping two hours, three hours a day? And there is this big giant every day who wouldn't be frustrated who would who, who, who would come back gentle with all the love when you're coming in and say oh my baby oh my cute husband oh my lovely dearest oh I missed you when you were at work when you were away when this cute little daughter makes a mess, you run. And she has to take care. Can I get a, a big amen from the mothers here? We don't think about those things. And there are many marriages that suffer postnatally. And one of the reasons it is because of this. Because the mothers are challenged. Who are worse with some of the mothers? The threat of betrayal. You are pregnant. You get, you give birth. And you have, are busy raising this child. And the person who gave you the child is nowhere to be found. A many single mothers who are busy raising children with bitterness and pain in their hearts. No mother gets a child on their own. There are many who are betrayed out there. But they must still raise this child. And we have the guards to say, Oh, mama, but I'm Without taking time to look at the threats and the challenges that they face as they raise this child. Inadequate time for self care. Why are you like this? Hey, man. We as bonus is better. Mm. And the next thing you are running to NMM, you your food up fresh, we are going to achieve the use. 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 In the name of Jesus, fire to that. You are looking for those who are still having uh, complete figures. You are the one who caused that. You are the one who brought her to the state. Take out your wedding album and see how she was before you. And when she is like that, all she is looking for is your support. She is looking for you to pamper her, to validate her, to love her with those marks that are now on her body that were previously not there before those four babies. And all the men say, Amen. Amen. There are many mothers, there are many ladies that are bleeding, broken, because they are not taken care of, they are not assisted as they might. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What about the young people? Rebellious. Ready to 
Yeah, Pastor, I must, ma'am. I must. You don't know my mom. You don't know. I don't need to know your mom. All I need to know is that the, the very English that's what I know. You wouldn't be English in the way you are English. You, you don't know my mom. You know mama. You mama. Mama, mama she's always on your case. And, and Go your case by Bengaku, mom. She would not be on your case. You would be the case when, if the mother was not there. Shut up and take care of your mom. Shut up and wake up and clean your room and do the things she's been asking you to do. Help your mom out to become a better mom. And all the young people say, Amen. Thank God for mom. Thank God for mom. Financial insecurities. Some of the challenges that mothers have. Some are retrenched. Some have no jobs. Some are not even supported. We are Pangel. This one is working. He is earning well. But it doesn't pay a cent for the children. And they have to raise them. And we expect them to perform miracles. What about in-law issues? We don't talk about these things. They, they, they want your sons and, and, your, and your kids, but they don't want you. They love your children, but they don't love you. How interesting. In law challenges mothers face as they raise their children and they have to navigate around these issues. They have to survive amongst these issues. And it is the mothers who take care. It is the mothers who are concerned about these things. I remember my mom. She would perform miracles when we go home, back home, a bolot. And she would have to protect us. Even as amongst those very people. One of her favorite lines was this. When you get there. When they ask which grade you do. You just faith. And yet I'm doing my grade 10. Go when I'm trying to stand at 8. That's a mother. The mother is protecting her kids from the in laws. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So there are many issues that mothers face as they raise their children. Conflicts with exes. His dollar is. They fight with those exes. Baby mom, baby dad, doesn't matter. There are issues that are there. Trying, we cancel mothers. They are trying their best to raise their, their children in front of them. But there is another one at the back who has an interest here. And they have to navigate around this. Some mothers are raising children out of wedlock. The father brought these. The husband brought these children here. She is doing her best to mother Abba Bandwa. And some of these children hate her guts. And sometimes she doesn't even get support from the person who brought these children. Then there is that one and she must continue to mother. And as men and as husbands, as children, we must appreciate this thing. It's not easy being a mother. It is not cheap being a mother. It is a full-time job. And mothers need the appreciation. Raising children, some of them with special needs. And it is the mother. I was a teacher. And we would have children that had challenges. And we would have those 
parent-teacher conferences. And most of the time it was the mothers that would be there. She's the one who gets the story. And these are things we laugh about. These are things we joke carelessly about. And what do you think they do to the mothers, to the ladies, to the women? And we need to address these things, especially in the church, in the house of the Lord. And able-bodied gentleman who is not adding any value, and he could. Women are carrying. Women are carrying a lot of loads. We're killing these women, and we need to do something about it. the verbal abuse that they. The emotional issues that they have to deal with. There are many, many, many things. What about the stigma and the judgment? Especially to the single mothers. I want to talk to them briefly this morning. Mothers, single mothers are so challenged. Now I want to encourage you and say, don't give up, single mother. I'm not here to ask about how you became a mother. And in reality, nobody even needs to ask you that. The reality is that you are a mother and there's a child. Here. Single mothers are under serious strain. According to nature, a child was supposed to be raised by a father and a mother. So they support each other. The other one is playing with the kid. The other one is reprimanding. The other one is hugging. The other one is showing direction. They are supposed to to be raised by a mom and a dad. Imagine when you are single. And most of the time, it is the ladies that are single parents. Very few single men that I know. But most of the time it's the single women. I can imagine your dilemma. I can imagine your strain. Raising bleeding children. Raising broken children. Children that are asking questions. Where is my father? And you don't even know where he is now. You wish you could know. He is God. And they tell you and you are being told. Don't curse him in his presence. Don't say bad things about him in his presence. Because you must protect this cute little baby of his. And in Apaga, there is nothing good to say about this dog. There is nothing good to say about it. But you have to contain yourself for the sake of this child. I want to encourage you and say don't give up. You are doing a great job. You are doing a great job, single mother. Be strong in the Lord and continue to do the work that you are doing. You carry their anger in your heart. Their frustrations and sometimes you have to suspend your own pain because you can't break down in front of this child. And some of you, you are mothering with guilt and blame on your shoulders. There is shame on the other side. You were too young to get a child. Sometimes it's even, you are even scared to introduce your child as your child. That's like me. Then do anazam go with vezan dala kid vedi to gaban nina wabam. You are scared to introduce them. Because people will ask her. But you must still mother. In the midst of all that. Please stay strong in the law. Don't drop the ball. Because that boy and that girl need you. In the name of Jesus. Listen. One of the things that you must accept is that parenting is not a competition. 
Mama, I want you to accept this, embrace this. Parenting is not a competition. There is no perfection in parenting. It is trial and error for everybody. There are those who are good at pointing fingers up until they have their own children. Don't blame another woman before you have your child that she has. If you have not mothered a teenager, don't speak too much. Wait until you have a teenager yourself. Mothering is not a competition. Mama Linda said something amazing yesterday. Umakati mentioned it. She said it is, it is okay to be a leaking vessel. Understand that you are doing your best. Pray for them. Pray for yourself and do your best. You might wish you to take them to big schools. If you don't have money to take them to that huge school, it doesn't matter. God will bring something out because he has got, he's got a way of taking ordinary things and making them extraordinary. Just do your best. Love your child. Even if they go to a township school, Love them in that school. Love them in those uh, school in the area. Love your kid. Tell them that you are a palace girl. Right there. Up. You are, you are a princess. Take care of them. Accept that the parenting is not a competition. I want you to also take time, mothers, to work on yourself. Take time to care for yourself. This is very important. I know it's difficult. But in a church like ours, I encourage you to befriend good families so that from time to time you'll be able to leave your child and go and spend some time with yourself and recover and recharge and reboot. Can I get an amen? Amen. Find a way to take time for yourself. Learn to spend quality time with your kids. Underline quality. Today it's difficult to spend quantity time. We don't have the luxury of a long time of, of quantity time. So spend quality time with your kids. When you get that moment, use it well. In the name of Jesus. Are you getting anything today? Are you learning anything this morning? Amen. Take care of yourself. Because you know that you would never be able to take care of others if you have not taken care of yourself. Connect with like-minded moms. Learn from the older mothers. The Bible says the older women must teach the younger women how to love their husbands. It's not just about loving them. Loving them is even speaks to taking care of the family, taking care of the home. Build purpose-driven relationships. That will help you to build you up as a mother. One thing is for sure. The heavens are counting on you in the name of Jesus. Can I ask the mothers to stand as I pray for them? Psalm 90. I want to pray for you. I want to pray this psalm over you, mothers. Doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, how young your children are, how old they are. I want to pray these words that are found in the book of Psalm 90, verse 14. I want to pray this heartily over your life. The Bible says here, Satisfy us in the morning, Lord, with your unfailing love. All that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. The prayer for you this morning is that the Lord will satisfy you in the morning with his unfailing love, Mama. Now the Lord may help you to sing songs of joy 
And that the Lord would help you to be glad all your days. I know you may have seen trouble. I, may, I know you may have known pain, a lot of it. But my prayer this morning is that the good God we serve, who says in his word, weeping may endure through the night, but joy will come in the morning. I pray that the Lord will satisfy you with his unfailing love and that Jehovah would make you glad all your days. In verse 15 it says, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. I don't know your trouble. I don't know your circumstances. But this morning I pray that the Lord Jehovah will make a way for you and make you smile and make you glad for as many days as you have seen pain. Now the Lord will bring double for your trouble in the name of Jesus. Verse 16 says, May your deeds be shown to your servants and may your splendor to their children. May your deeds, Lord, be shown to your servants and may your splendor to their children. I pray for every mother in this place, Lord, that they may see your deeds in their lives. I pray to go to Isantla Sako, Umamanga Mnye Olapa, married and single, that they would see the deeds of the Lord. To go to Isantla Sako, was born. As born a bumini bake, as born a bantuan and bake, as born a chatu and wak, as born in Finiake, as born a gumapu paake. May your deeds be seen. May your deeds manifest over every mother in this place. In the name of Jesus. Some are teenage mothers, Father. I pray that the deeds of the Lord, the deeds of the Lord, some still need to be mothered. Take away to a look at themselves. But I pray that they may see your deeds. They would never amount to anything. They have even thought that about themselves. But Lord, I pray that the hand of the Lord would be upon every mother. Every mother. That their deeds, your deeds, Father, would be seen upon their children. But I pray today for a turnaround, Father. I pray for a turnaround. Babuye onyana babos. Babuye into mbiza. Botiko wetu. Sibuye le gwinthela. Ere bafundi sela zona. May your deeds, Father, be shown to your children, to your mothers, to your servants in this place. And lastly, Lord, your word says, May the favor of the Lord God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, Lord, establish the work of our hands. That goes here too. Your favor will continue to rest upon them. That we will have mothers that have the favor of God. That even as they leave this place, they will live with the favor of God. That the hand of God will be upon them. That every work they do, Father, will turn green. Whatever they touch, that it will turn gold in the name of Jesus. Wherever they set the soles of their feet, let that ground be theirs to take. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. So they will become the mothers that you want them to be. Establish the work of their hands. May they raise powerful godly children. Out of their loins and out of their hands, my God. May devil destroyers come out. May giants of faith come out. In the name of Jesus. Some are so young, Father. They are still raising babies, Father. And they are wondering, how do I do this in this evil world? Yes, you will do it when the favor of the Lord is upon you. May your hand, by God, continually be upon them and may you bless every mother in the name of Jesus touch those that have been broken by life touch those that have been hurt by their own children and by their own families 
By God, restore their soul. We are Buisa Umpefumlo. Olatekileyo. Now, but to go to my police. That when they leave this place, they will leave this place stronger than when they came. In Jesus' mighty name. Whilst every head is bowed and every eye closed, everyone please stand up on your feet as we close the meeting. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If you are here, you've never given your life to Jesus. Perhaps you are a mother, you are a father. You are not born again. You are a young man, you are a young lady. And you are saying, Pastor, how I wish I could have peace with God. How I wish today I could receive Jesus in my heart. If that is you where you are standing, can you put up your right hand? I want to pray with anyone who says I want to give my life to Jesus. You are not born again, you are not saved. Put up your right hand, don't be shy. And you want to give your life to Jesus. In your mama, why don't you put up your hand and give your life to Jesus? Jesus. God bless you there. Anyone else who wants to join it? Anybody else who wants to join them? Put your right hand up. Praise the name of Jesus. Please come here. I want to pray with you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just clap for them as they come. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Anybody else who wants to join these ones? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Stretch your hands towards this beautiful daughter as she gives her life to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together once more for them. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven and let receive the blessing of the Lord. Oh, Father, thank you so much, my God, for your love that passes all our understanding. And thank you for the favor of the Lord. I release it once more to go away to over everyone in this place. That, Lord, even as we take on another week, that the hand of the Lord would be upon us. That Jehovah would go before us and level mountains. That gates of bronze will break down and that they would be open forever. Bless us going out, Lord. Bless us coming in. Bless us in the city. Bless us in the country. Keep us as the hurts and never the tates. Keep us above and never beneath. Bless us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. With every spiritual blessing that is found in the book of Deuteronomy, my God, may we be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone say amen. Everyone say amen. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers.